Good morning and welcome back to Saturday Morning Switch. And we truly are back after last week's hiatus where I was in parts unknown, or Scotland to be more accurate, and unable to make a new episode. I tried to have a stopgap but I couldn't get it uploaded in time so, whoops, sorry. But anyway, now is the time to look at what happened this year at E3. The event was filled with interesting games and trailers and I'm now looking forward to titles like Anthem and Beyond Good and Evil 2. But if there was one system that stole the show, it's the Switch. Appearances in other conferences, including surprisingly Microsoft's, alongside a strong presentation for Nintendo, have at home how good Switch owners are going to have it this year, so let's break it all down. Starting off with the stuff we already kinda knew about, we got the confirmation on what ARMS' first few updates will be. Max Brass, the final boss of a single player Grand Prix, will be made playable in the game's second content update, with the first and in a spectator mode, something I must admit I just assumed was in the game. Max seems to share Springman's perma-charge at quarter health trick, as well as being unflinching when you charge up, making him a tough foe in the late game of a fight. We also got to check out Splatoon 2's single player mode, Salmon Run, alongside the big focus sites multiplayer thanks to the Inkling Invitational. Tasking players with retrieving golden eggs which only spawn once the boss is felled and bringing them back to a safe area, it requires a level of teamwork, especially if you ramp up the percentage scale that lacks difficulty. More maps and events are also promised for the mode, so hopefully the single player isn't going to die a slow death, even if it's not the main focus. Pokemon also featured, though not as largely as some had hoped. Pokemon was another tournament ran at the show, with players getting to see how it performed on Switch, and try out some of the new characters, including previously arcade exclusives like Darkrai, and all new characters like Decidueye. Hopefully Nintendo commit to Pokemon a bit harder this time around than they did on the Wii U. We also did learn that Game Freak are making a proper Pokemon game for the Switch, which comes as a surprise to no one. With nothing to say about it other than assurance of its existence, that'll do a little to placate fans who want more concrete evidence of the future of the series. Speaking of announcements without footage, Metroid Prime 4! It's happening, and while Nintendo is assuring players a 2018 release, with nothing to show at this point, and a remembrance of how long some Wii U games took to develop, 2019 seems more likely. Personally, I'd rather they held off on this until they had something to show, much like with Pokemon, but it'd certainly provide one of the big pops of the event, and prove Samus is not forgotten just yet. But enough of that mild negativity, let's transition into stuff we did see in action. While my prediction wasn't spot on the money, Breath of the Wild's first DLC pack, titled The Master Trials, launches next Friday on June 30th, with the new Link Amiibo out now. The Trial of the Sword looks very reminiscent of a certain memorable shine in the main game, and there are plenty of other nifty features including that co-op mask, which I will go to the ends of the bloody earth to acquire. We also got to learn a little bit more about the second pack called The Champion's Ballad, set for a holiday release alongside amiibo figures of the four champions. No, Mifa's figure, probably the one most people want, looked a bit suspect when they revealed them. Hopefully that was just a bad cast. Speaking of DLC updates, Minecraft. Microsoft revealed that the ultra popular title will be getting a cross-platform online play update, and that includes the Switch. Yes, Xbox and Switch players can run around side by side in a move that is something truly progressive in this industry. Rocket League will also follow suit when it launches on Switch later this year. Sadly, PlayStation owners aren't allowed in the playpen by Sony's decree, so if you want a bigger player base, I'd stick to Microsoft and Nintendo releases. But if we're talking about standout games unveiled at other conferences, then you have to talk about Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Not only did you get the cool as heck visual of Yves Gillamon and Shigeru Miyamoto posing with their toys, but the game looks as great as hoped, a seamless fusion of XCOM style mechanics into a more cartoony and visually stimulating world where Mario style meets Rabbit's humour. I've spoken of how I was intrigued before, but seeing this in action has made it a day one purchase when it comes out August 29th. Festa also talked a bit about their contributions to Nintendo's system, with Skyrim letting players dress up as Link, as well as use some amiibo, and it contains the three major DLC packs for the game. If you want to believe in Amazon leak, the game will be coming out on November 28th, though there's no official word on that outside of late 2017 yet. Late 2017 is looking pretty stacked for the Switch in general, with several first party releases closing out the year. Fire Emblem Warriors, set for a September 28th release in Japan and gunning for a 2017 release in the West too, was demoed with a new story trailer and some gameplay, focusing on all the swordsmen and swordswomen, though there will be more variety in the finished product. If you're after something more Japanese than a Musou title though, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 as you covered. The only big JRPG of note across any of the conferences, and reassured to be coming out this year, the third game in the Xenoblade series, and you thought Microsoft were bad at naming things, showcased more footage and gameplay. While the art style is more chibi than previous entries, the gameplay looks to be just as solid, so if you want another epic to sink your teeth into, hold on out for this title. But of course, you'll notice I've skirted around the big one. 
Launching on the 27th of October, Super Mario Odyssey looks like the maddest Mario ever made. The big reveal in the new trailer, besides an amazing jazz song, is that your new sentient headwear can capture things. Goombas, chain chomps, human beings, dinosaurs, nothing is safe. It's terrifying in some regards, but opens up so many doors for interesting gameplay that I now regret ever wondering where they could go next with the series. It's not Power Stars or Shine Spikes you're after this time either, it's Power Moons, and not back to the free up moons of older Mario games, hit around large worlds full of secrets to explore. Great news for those hoping for a return to the old style of 64 and Sunshine. There's also a co-op option, slightly similar to what Galaxy had, allowing the second player to take control of Cappy, helping or hindering Mario as you wish. This is barely scratching the tip of the iceberg, but I'm trying not to let myself see too much as I enjoy discovering things for myself. So roll on October. And as for Beyond 2017, well, we got to see Kirby and Yoshi, featuring in games currently called Kirby and Yoshi. Kirby seems to be focused on having multiple comrades with you this time around, while Yoshi has a Paper Mario-esque world flipping mechanic. Both will no doubt offer more classic Nintendo 2D side-scrolling platformer gameplay. No doubt as the time draws near for the release of these two, we'll see them a bit more in action, but it does show Nintendo are committed for the Switch into next year. And it is nice to have that worry reassured. Despite hosting a show called Saturday Morning Switch, there was a small part of me still fearing the worst for the new system, with lack of support at retail to go alongside Nintendo's titles. Sure, E3 didn't really showcase a third party resurgence, with multi-plat Switch games being an exception, not a rule. But if Nintendo can continue to have roughly one game a month, much like they used to with the 3DS, then I'm a lot less worried. June is ARMS, July is Splatoon, August is Rabbids, September is Pokken, October is Mario, November and December are Fire Emblem and Xenoblade. And this doesn't touch on other releases both physical and digital, or the post-launch support, like with Zelda's DLC. While the 3DS looks set to go out in style too, with a 2D Metroid, a remake of one of Mario's finest RPGs, and new Pokemon games, it seems clear the Switch is ready to take up the mantle of Nintendo's solo system, and that with their development teams combined, they can make a system and software you just can't miss. I'm as excited for the future of the Switch as I've ever been. All I'll have to do now is figure out how I'm going to budget for it. And that brings this episode to a close. Did you enjoy it? Then why not give us a like, leave us a comment, or subscribe to the channel to see more new content as it goes live. Next week, we'll be looking at what came out on Switch throughout the month of June. So until then, thanks for watching, take care, y'all.